Welcome back to the Maths Guy, everyone. Today's lesson is comparing fractions with different denominators. Let's start. Okay, so today we're going to be working on these three questions here. Three quarters versus four twelfths, three quarters versus four fifths, and two fifths versus one third. So let's begin, and let's begin here with three quarters versus four twelfths. So if we're going to look at three quarters versus four twelfths, what we're asking is which fraction has the greater value? So we could look at it like this, and we could say that, okay, my three quarters, this is quite clearly four is our denominator, so we need to have four sections, one, two, three, four, and three being our numerator means we get three of these sections, so one, two, three. And then we can look at four twelfths and realize we have to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sections, and this way we're getting four of them. So on the surface, it might look like four twelfths is greater because it looks like you're getting more. But this would not be the way to do it. This is wrong because when we're looking at comparing two fractions, unless it's a mixed number fraction, which we'll get to later, both of these fractions are fractions of one, the same value. So when we create our bars like this, we have to have it the same length. Can't have it like this with different lengths. That would be wrong. So our bars have to be the same length. So three quarters would be one, two, three as before, but our four twelfths now would only be these small little segments. One, two, three, four. So now when we look at it, we can quite clearly see three quarters is more. But this is not a very convenient way of doing it. We need an alternative method because we can't be drawing bars all day and we might not get them very accurate without proper measurements. So we need an alternative. And that alternative is going to be this, equivalent fractions. And if you've not checked out my video on equivalent fractions, this is your time to press pause and go and watch that first because that's really important and that's what's going to help you understand this. Okay, so what is an equivalent fraction very quickly? It's a fraction that has the same value but looks different might have a different denominator and a different numerator value, but the value of the whole fractions are the same. So what we need to do to these, we can try and find an equivalent fraction of one of these to try and make it so that we have the same denominator. Because if we have the same denominator, it's going to be super easy to compare, a bit like in the previous video when we were comparing fractions with the same denominator. So now, what can we see straight away? Well, I can see that actually this 4 has a relationship with this 12. And I don't mean it's his mum, I mean it's got a mathematical relationship. What I can see is that 12 is in the four times table, because if I times four by three, I get to 12. So I'm gonna turn this into an equivalent fraction. So I'm gonna make the denominator a 12. And I realized that from getting from four to 12, I had to times by three, so therefore, as we know about equivalent fractions, whatever I do to the denominator, I also need to do to the numerator. So the three is also times by three, which would become a nine. So now my two fractions that I'm comparing are four twelfths and nine twelfths. And that's suddenly really easy, isn't it? Because I can clearly see that nine twelfths of something would have a greater value than four twelfths. And I can see that just very quickly in my bar model again. So my 9 twelfths would look like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, versus my 1, 2, 3, 4 twelfths. So my 9 twelfths is greater. So let's go back to the question. And we now know that 3 quarters is the same as 9 twelfths. But the question said, which one is greater, 4 twelfths or 3 fourths? So I'm going to write it like this. 3 fourths is greater than four twelfths. I'm not gonna put my nine twelfths because that's the equivalent fraction we made up to help us I'm using the two fractions that we started with. And now I've just used a funny little symbol, this one here. If you saw the previous video, you will realize that that means greater than, but we have three symbols that are very important when we're comparing. We have the greater than symbol, the equal to, or the less than. And these work a little bit like this. I'll do this very quickly. Six would be greater than three, 2 would be equal to 1 plus 1, and 1 is less than 3. So that's just a very quick look at that. 
So let's keep using these symbols as we answer the next two questions. And let's start question two. We're going to have a look at this question here, three quarters or four fifths. Again, our denominators are different, so we're going to need to do some magic. So what can I see here? Is there a relationship? Well, not an obvious one because five is not in the four times table or four is not in the five times table. So there's an obvious one. So I now need to find a number that would be in both of their times tables. So I'm going to go up in a couple of their times tables and just show you a method to do this. So I could go four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. I'm going to stop there for a moment. And then in my five times table, I could do five, 10, 15, 20. Oh, I see something. I have a 20 over here, and I have a 20 on this side. So now I'm gonna make equivalent fractions for both of these, but with the denominator 20. Okay, well how did I get from five to 20? I have to multiply by four, so therefore I have to do the same thing to my numerator, so therefore four times four is 16. So four fifths is equivalent to 16 twentieths, okay? Well, how did I get from four to 20 on this side? I had to multiply by five. Therefore, I have to multiply my numerator by five. And three times five is 15. So I have 15 twentieths or 16 twentieths. So now I can see that the 16 twentieths has a greater value. So again, to answer my question, I need to write four fifths is greater than three fourths or three quarters. Okay, that was slightly harder. We had to find a common factor. Let's look at another way of doing that on question three. So question three is this one, two fifths versus one third. And what I can see straight away is I don't have that obvious relationship between the two numbers. Three is not in the five times table and five is not in the three times table. So I need to find that common factor again. What I could do is do my multiplication table all the way down until I find a common one or I can do a little trick. I'm gonna show you a little sneaky trick here. So watch this. If I get my five and my three and I multiply them together, it gives me 15. Now, because I've multiplied them together, that 15 has to be a multiple of both of them. Therefore, 15 is a common multiple. So I can just use that. So again, let's start from here then. So I know that 15s are gonna be my denominators. Well, how did I get from 3 to 15? I know I multiplied it by 5. So whatever I do to the bottom, I must now do to the top. The numerator times it by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. So 1 third is equivalent to 5 fifteenths. Okay, well, how did I get from 5 to 15? I multiplied by 3. Therefore, what I did to the denominator, I now need to do to the numerator. Times it by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so now I'm at this point, I can clearly see again that I have 6 fifteenths or 5 fifteenths, therefore my 6 fifteenth has the greater value. 2 fifths has a greater value than 1 third. So I would write it like this, 2 fifths is greater than 1 third. And I'd give myself a nice big shiny gold tick. So there's a sneaky little trick, isn't there? We can look at our two fractions, and rather than trying to work out which is the, the lowest common multiple, I can just multiply them together, and it will give me a multiple that I can use. And then whatever I do to that denominator, I have to then do to the numerator. That's a really useful trick. Okay, I'm gonna give you these three questions. What I want you to do is try and work out which one has the greater value, and I want you to try and put the answers in the comment section. So press pause on the video in a moment, have a go at working them out, and then put the comments in the answer section, and I'm gonna try and mark every one. Okay guys, I hope this video has been useful to you. This is a really important stage in fractions to understand how we can use equivalent fraction, to understand how to use equivalent fractions to order and compare, and it's gonna help us in the future lesson, which is gonna be adding and subtracting these fractions. So if you've enjoyed this video or it's been helpful, please think about giving it a like and subscribe. Check out our website, www.themathsguide.com, and we're gonna see you in a future video, guys. Peace out.